Love that prayer, Meredith. Sustain us till fall break. Countdown's on. We're almost there. Hey, as you know, this uh, semester in chapel, we've been working our way through the book of Proverbs. And we're fortunate that in the next few chapels, we're going to be listening to Proverbs being preached by our covenant partners. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but we have covenant partnership with six churches or parishes in the area. St. Francis, Father Charlie today, and Getty Church, Brian Aulick on Friday, Moran Park, Britton Smith next Wednesday, Third Reformed Church, that was Kent Fry last week, and then uh, Maple Avenue Ministries, Denise Kingdom Greer. Those are our covenant partners. If you're looking for a church or a parish, those are churches and parishes who've made a commitment to say, we love college students, and we want to welcome them in our church or parish and make sure they're included in the body as well, too. So anyway, we get the great privilege to welcome Father Charlie Brown of St. Francis Day to preach from the book of Proverbs. How many know Father Charlie? Can you give him a welcome today? Well, thank you. It's good to to be back and to worship with you and to, to share God's word with you once again. And, um... This is the word of God from Proverbs that I'd like to, to pray with you about and to break open. And it's one that, um, that we've heard very recently. It comes from Proverbs 3, verses 27 and 28. It says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, Go and come again. Tomorrow I will give it. When you have it with you. These words seem to me to be very basic. Something that, oh yeah, we understand it. Maybe to simplify this, it's when you can do good, do good. We know that. We've been taught that from our earliest years. But yet we we look at the fact that we don't always do it. There's so many opportunities that, that so easily pass us by. Looking within this, I want to um, to talk about something that I think many of you here in your in your classes in your life here at Hope and and in your in your faith, that idea of God's calling, that idea of vocation that we have, the sense that God has called each and every one of you, each and every one of us, to something special, a path, and the desire that God has planted within each and every one of us to do something for His kingdom to contribute something of our lives to our world with God's help and God's providence and grace to make a difference in our world. And that's something that that I know all of you pray about, all of you have that within you. And it's something that's very much in the forefront of, of your thinking. We can be very idealistic. We can look at these things and all the great things that we hope to do in our lives. But sometimes we can forget this sense of Proverbs. I'll give you an example in, in my life back when I was beginning theology, back in studying in the University of Toronto. One of the opportunities that I had prior to that, an undergraduate, and when I was studying in New Mexico, was I was introduced to the deaf community. And being introduced to that community, the culture, and the language, I really got on fire to learn American Sign Language. And then my idealism... I thought my calling at the time was, here I'm studying to be a priest, but I want to to work with the deaf. I want to be able to to preach the word of God to them. This word of God that that they cannot hear. The word of God that they may not have access to for many reasons. And so when I moved to Toronto, I had a checklist of all these things that I wanted to do. You have a good plan, and that's, that's a good thing. So when I get to Toronto, what I want to do first, I want to uh, take classes. So check, I found a place to take American Sign Language. Second thing is to look to where is there a church where the deaf are meeting to worship. Check, I found that. The third thing is what can I do to get involved in in this ministry? Got that all done. So I I was feeling pretty good about myself. So one day um, I was brought back to earth. I was walking, you know, from one place to another in the city of Toronto, and 
So somebody, there's a little bit, not a commotion, but, you know, a busy street, and people were trying to avoid this, this young man who was trying to sell them something, I think chocolates or something. But he was a bit obnoxious, maybe not all that clean, somebody that people were wanting to avoid. I did the same thing, just to get by this person. I saw that he wasn't able to speak. He wasn't using American Sign Language, but yet just using a little bit of the ability that he had to speak, and, and I just walked right on by. You ever done something like that? All these great ideals. I want to save you know, the deaf world, you know, kind of arrogant. And at that moment, here's someone that God had put in front of my path, at least to acknowledge, to, to reach out to, to do something good. My goodness, you know, buy a box, box of chocolates. What's the big deal? And I walked by. And I said to myself, you know, you hypocrite, what are you trying to do? And my point is, is not to, to get caught up in guilt for myself or for any of us, but how we can fail when God puts that person in front of us. Do not withhold the good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do so. We can come up with examples of that in, in our everyday living. What we need to see this is as an opportunity, an opportunity to show forth that love of God. But yet there's those obstacles. Our own plans get in the way. Our own dreams, our own agendas. I've got to, you know, for me, I was so busy about doing all these great things to save the world, I didn't do good to that person in front of me. Verse 28 talks about that, about procrastination. Well, maybe someday I'll get to that. Someday I'll do the good that God is calling me to do. God is calling us to do that good to that person in front of us, here and now, today. To share that light that God has given to us with another. I think in today's world, too, I want to break open this idea a little bit. To whom it is due. Who is that person that has a claim on us? If you're like me, if you're like most of us, we we can narrow that, that circle of those people that have a claim on us or we think have a claim on us. Well, I will do good for this person, but not that person. And how wrong we are when we fall into that. Because in reality, who has a claim on us? What did, how did Jesus respond when that question was put to him? Who is my neighbor? He gave us that beautiful teaching, that beautiful parable of the Good Samaritan. That person that is in front of us in need that we're called to reach out to, to do good to. There's no one. All of us are God's children. There's no one that doesn't have a claim on our goodness and love. This, this last one here is, I think we all struggle with this. That if it is in your power, you know what I say to myself? I don't have the power. There's nothing I can do. I don't have the resources. I don't have the time. I think you say that as well. You're all busy. You're overwhelmed with, with so many things here in, in college life. I don't have time to do that. But we do. Well, I don't have the resources. There's, you know, I'm just trying to, to take care of me so I can get through this and survive this, you know, what I have to do before midterm break is here. But there's always enough within us. God's grace is, over, is so abundant. When we look at it, and I fall into this trap too, and we look at, well, there's scarcity. There's not enough. There's not enough of me. There's not enough of love. There's not enough time. I can't do that. But I think we all know when we reflect on the goodness that we have shared, that God always, always provides. There's always enough. There's always enough for us to give to that person that does indeed have a claim on us. And finally, the, I think the last image I'd like to speak about is, is that image in, in Matthew 5, when Jesus gives us the Beatitudes and says that you are the light of the world. That light that we carry is God's love. The goodness that we do is sharing that love with each other. We don't need to be reminded in, in our world today of how many people struggle, how many people are caught in, in darkness, how many people are without hope, 
struggling to have faith, to feel connected, to feel that they belong, that's up to us. God's reaching out to us. That's that person. That's the one that we share that light to. So today in your walk with Christ, remember, if you can do good, do good. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do so. If you're able to be present to somebody, be present. If somebody needs a word of forgiveness, say it. Somebody's feeling down and needs a word of encouragement, do it. If you can take a minute to thank somebody for what they've done for you, let them know your appreciation. And in the big issues of life and this, just the violence and that we see in our world today, how do we respond to that? Again, by doing good, by showing love, by reaching out to those in need. So let, let us put our goodness into action and let us pray. In God of love, you have sent us your son Jesus that shows us the nearness of your love but also gives us his love and grace that we too may be your instruments of love and grace to all that we meet that others may come to know your goodness, your love, and your mercy. So Lord, help us to everyone we meet today to bear that light, to bear your love. Let's take advantage of those opportunities. And let us also pray in a very special way all of those who are suffering in, in darkness and despair, those that are suffering from violence in our country and our world. May they also, through us and through your church, Know your presence and your love and your light. So be with us today, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. And go in peace. Thank you.